A picture is worth a thousand words, but what about punctuation? How can you truly sell the power of a super shotgun, the force of an explosion, or the impact of a hard landing? Haptic feedback, vignettes, and post-processing all do a fine enough job, but nothing is quite as visceral as a camera shake. Camera shakes are a common tool in all kinds of games. Typically used to convey the feeling of an impact or force, it's easy to chalk them up as a purely cosmetic tool. Indeed, they have a significant contribution to game feel, but they also serve as sources of informational feedback. For example, shakes don't just inform the player that they've fired their weapon, although this is indeed useful, but they also communicate how much damage it's likely to have done. The default pistol always shakes less than the automatic rifle, and rarely does anything beat the double-barreled shotgun. Additionally, the degree of shake indicates the proximity of a grenade blast, or quite how much damage has just been taken. Game state communication is a vital part of game design, and shakes serve as a diegetic means of doing this. Camera shakes work by altering the relative transform of the player camera, resulting in visual movement of the player viewport. Not all shakes are created equal, and indeed the amplitude and frequency of these changes can be fine-tuned between shake instances. The transform of something is comprised of a rotation, location, and scale. Rotation is possible across three axes, the pitch, yaw, and roll. Rotation is particularly useful for communicating sudden shocks that would literally vibrate the player. Energy weapons, explosions, and large elevators fit the bill. Translation can occur on three axes as well. The X, or forwards and backwards, the Y, or side to side, and the Z, or up and down. Translation is well suited to impacts that would physically shift the player, such as landing, recoiling, or being pushed. Transforms also typically comprise a scale on the X, Y, and Z axes. However, for a camera, this is somewhat synonymous with FOV. FOV, or field of vision, is a single number that describes the extent of the world that is observable by the camera at any given moment. Fluctuations in FOV are comparatively nauseating at high amplitudes, as our human eyes are not used to such visuals. However, this does make FOV changes well suited to moments of magic or with superhero abilities. Additionally, small FOV fluctuations vaguely mimic X-axis translation, so can also be used for recoil, as seen in the original Doom games. These parameters can be further tuned by alteration of the amplitude and frequency of their change over time. Simply put, amplitude is the severity of the overall effect. Higher numbers result in more rotation, more translation, and more FOV alteration. Frequency, however, is the amount of times per unit time that the alterations will occur. Additionally, there are multiple methods for calculating the transform changes. A sine curve, for example, results in shake values bouncing smoothly between A and B, and back to A again. Random curves, however, mean that the values can move anywhere between A and B, and in either direction, resulting in less consistent patterns. Initial offsets can also be defined. Setting the offset as zero leads to a consistent shake, whereas again, setting it to random results in immediate fluctuations in either direction when the shake first starts. These are all just tools in the arsenal of shake customization. By precisely setting transform and behavior parameters, Different styles of shake can be achieved, and each is suited to a particular role. It is immediately apparent that camera shake is a great tool for making actions feel more visceral. Game feel is a core focus for designers, and methods of sprucing up actions such as particles, sounds, and camera shakes are referred to as juice. A juicy game just feels better. Camera Shake is a brilliant tool for this, bringing in elements of tactility to a otherwise 2D screen. 
However, juice goes hand in hand with one of the most important concepts of design, namely feedback and communication. Yes, the gun feels good to fire, but I guarantee you that the best feeling guns are typically also the hardest to unlock or deal the most damage and often play the most important narrative role. Partly this is done because juice intrinsically motivates the player to do something because it feels good. And of course, designers want the player to focus and appreciate these special weapons. However, juice is also crucial in communicating to the player that these weapons are the most important and the strongest in the first place. If a grenade goes off behind a player, they may lose its sound amidst other gunfire and will never see it explode. However, their screen will start to shake and this provides feedback as to the explosion event actually occurring and explains why the player has just taken a bunch of damage. Warhammer Space Marine, for example, is a very juicy game and shake is present on every weapon impact. Not only does it make you feel awesome firing these massive weapons, but it also lets you know you've actually hit your target and how much damage you've just done. Shake needs to be controlled and done right. Motion sickness is a serious issue and camera shake is often a significant factor in games. Most games now have options for disabling shakes, though personally I would like to see more offering a sliding shake modifier multiplier for those who still want a bit of the action. How a shake utilizes some or all of rotation, translation and FOV defines how it feels to perform the corresponding action, and sometimes that means having to make it underwhelming compared to other features. In games, bigger tends to mean better, but you can't have the big without the small. Choosing what should shake and by how much it should shake dictates how your game feels and everything within it is relative. And as much as I love shakes, perhaps not everything really needs them. Sometimes toning them down and using them in specific situations is actually the best way to have unclouded and clear feedback for the player. That all said, that's everything I have about shakes for you today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.